Oh, statement. For the given positive integer, integer n, your task is to return an array of length n plus 1, so such that for each x, where 0 is less than or equal to x, x is less than or equal to n, result x is a count of 1s in a binary representation of x. And this image sh tells us shows us what's up. So we have n of 2. So we go from 0, 1, and 2. And, and uh, the binary representations of that so 0, 1, and 1, 1, 1, 0. And we count the number of 1s in each step. So there's 1, 1 here, 1, 1 here. So that's why it's 0, 1, 1, a single 1. For 3, things go from 0 to 1 to 1, 0 to 1, 1. And there is no, no 1 here. There's a single 1. There, there's a single 1. And there are two 1 digits here. So we update the array like that. And that's the gist of this problem. <laughs> now for the naive approach to this, this problem, you iterate through the string character by character, then you convert each number to its binary representation, count the number of one bits in each binary rep, and store the result in an array. And that's an O of n log n, which is not bad, actually very tolerable, and space complexity of O of n. But for the optimized approach, you use dynamic pro programming to calculate the stored number of one bits used for future iterations. And it requires you to realize this fact over here. So the first one is going to be zero, right? The second one is always going to be one. So that's the base case for our recursion. And then for any even number, the count of one bits will be uh, what it will be equal to whatever it was half for half the number. So for instance, the number of bits in four will always equal to what's in two, and the number of bits in twelve will always equal what's in six. So there are two bits here, like single bits, and as you can see. And then for odd numbers, the difference is that it will always be equal to what is half of it plus one. So for 15, you would get seven plus one. So seven had three items, 15 is gonna have four. For seven, we're gonna say three plus one. So so that's the floor, right? So seven divided by three fourth. Um, and that, so three has to, while seven is gonna have three. So this is what that looks like. So for an input of 10, right, we uh, initialize everything to zeros. And when you look at the code, this is all that it takes. It's commented out, so it makes it longer. We create an array, fill everything with zeros, as, as you can see here. Yep. And then we remember what we said about even and odd numbers. And then we add the base case for a zero in the first of iterations. Uh, basically, if it's zero, yeah, we could just return an empty array because that's what it is. And otherwise, um, set the first two elements to do of the array, as we did down here in this image, zero and one. And then now we're iterating from 2 to n, okay? So we're iterating from 2 to n. And then for each case, 2 is an even iteration. And we're going to pick what, what what is half of 2. So the, the basically the result, of, the result at 1. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So whatever is at 1 is going to be what's at 2. And that's what this looks like. So if it's even, right, just pick uh, whatever is indexed at half of that position, right, and set it. Um, otherwise, if it's odd, right, pick what is at half of that position and add one to, one to it. And that's it. And it's dynamic programming because we're building, we're using previous solutions to compute future solutions, as you can see here. Um, and then we return a final result array, and that is that about that. So, and they step through it here in the code. So, three is odd. We say three divided by two, uh, that's uh, the floor, that's one, right? Because remember, there's a floor here so that we don't index at uh, with floating point numbers. And that's the gist of it, right? Whatever you get, you add, add one to it, right? Uh, update it over here, S2, and so on and so forth. Just keep going up to the end. That's all there is to this problem, really. Uh, let's look at the time complexity. So you notice in the array, we're only looping once through the entire array. So O of n, that's what O of n represents. Um, and then space complexity is O of 1, because we're not storing anything bigger, depending on the size of the array. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to it, really. As you can see, we loop only once, right? And result doesn't grow in size, right? It just depends on n or whatever n is. So uh, yeah, as, as we're building results, right? We don't store anything extra, basically. That's why it's O of n. That's all. Cheers.